I'm neglected a while ago to uh, thank uh, Ms. Clayton and the staff and uh, Ms. Lynn and uh, all of our friends we had this evening. Must have been the best in the globe on that video. So we appreciate your hospitality. I'll leave that to you. Okay. Welcome to Duval, where we strive to be respectful, recognized academically, and socially conscious of relevant issues that impact our life now and in the future. Attaining these attributes help our students understand their role as a contributing member of society. Our Respect and Protect Pledge is an example of what it means to be a Yellow Jacket. Please listen as some of our students recite our pledge. Please come forward, my Duval students, please. Come up front. Stand right there and face them, but I kind of know. Van, please join in on this. Annie Grace, would you start something? Annie Grace, would you start it? I'm a yellow jacket. I am special. I am important. I promise to be respectful. I promise to make responsible choices. I will control my words, actions, and emotions. I represent myself, my family, and my school. We are special. We are Duval. Good job. Thank you very much. Needless to say, I'm very proud of this group of kids that we have with us tonight. When I came to Duval, I had a vision of a middle school band because I felt our students deserved the opportunity to be part of the band and music program at Lincoln County High School. Mr. Carter's worked very hard to start our band. We also worked with the Play Center, who sends Mr. Manaki down to do private lessons for our students. At the regional middle school band rating, our band received an overall rating of one last year, which is the highest rating possible. I'm very proud of our band. You might wonder why I'm so over the top about the band. Well, it's been proven that schools that have strong music and art programs also do better on tests. If you look in the hallway, you'll see the artwork from our students, plus the beautiful poppies on the wall by my office. And now you're going to have the opportunity to sit back and listen to a few selections by our band. So please welcome the Duval Yellow Jacket Band.
guys ready? All right, here we go. Uh, bass and drums from the top. One, a two, a one, two, ready, and. about technology at Duval. We are, um, it's kind of happened, I, get, I wouldn't say by accident, but we've kind of moved into being a, a leader in technology, not just in the county, but in the state as well. Uh, we have a lot going on. A, a couple things I would like to mention is that now, as you know, we have an increased dependence on technology. It's not just that we would like to use technology, we're required to use technology. These are some of the things that teachers have to do. They have to do Spanish online instruction. They have the Golden Horseshoe exam is online now. They have scholastic reading inventory for grade levels. We have cognitive tutor and math. Dibbles testing for all the elementary students. We have Mathia for certain grade levels of middle school math. We have tech steps. Every teacher has to do six. We have the 2014 balanced assessment where all of our state testing will be done online. Uh, not next year, but the, the year following that, there will be no paper copies. All the testing will be done online. We have the ACT Explore test for our 8th graders. West Virginia Rights, all teachers have to do uh, at least six, I believe, acuity lessons have to be done. West test writing assessment, benchmarks. These are all things that teachers have to do with technology. These are not even any optional things that we have to do. So we have a dependence on technology. We have to not only integrate it into our classrooms, we have to be on the cutting edge of what's next. And Duval is there right now actually we need uh, we needed this year when it started out we needed increased access for our students we have approaching 600 students we they have to do all those things that that I just listed so they have to have access 
So this year we've added four new sets of the small laptops that teachers have access to. They're here, they're not set up yet, which will bring me to one of my points at the end. Uh, they're still in boxes. Um, we have an iPad lab that we got last year of 20. That lets um, some of the research that has to be done take place outside of the classroom outside of the computer lab. Teachers can't get into computer labs because of all the mandatory things to do, extra things like research that are required by our content standards. And we have a class set of Kuno tablets um, that is in the fifth grade this year. I want to mention Tech Steps because Tech Steps is kind of a top-down thing that came from the state. Uh, Tech Steps has done some important things for our schools and you know a lot of times you hear negative things about Tech Steps, but one of the things that Tech Steps has done not only has prepared our teacher, our students, but it has prepared our teachers. Uh, this, the teachers were a little bit uncomfortable teaching things that they, they didn't do themselves. Now our teachers, I think, are very comfortable using the iPads and the laptops and using Microsoft products to teach, and they're okay with teaching students now, because it's very uncomfortable to teach students things that you don't use yourself. So I think Tech Steps has allowed them to get very comfortable with that. They, um, we also at Google have an implementation schedule that assures that everybody completes all their tech steps. That's another uh, thing that Ms. Clayton implemented and it allows teachers to know exactly where we stand with tech steps. You are here. You have to have this done by May. You have to have this done by December. You have to have this done by November. And we know exactly what's expected of us with our tech steps lesson and it's been a, it's been a, a very helpful thing at Duval. We have two technology grant recipients. Uh, Ms. Tina Atkins got one of the Lincoln County technology grants that um, give $8,000 to a teacher who will write a proposal. She did a proposal for using Lego robotics in her third grade classroom and her kids are going to be able to make and compete with robots and it's going to be fabulous. I can't wait to get some action shots of that. Also, our fifth grade, uh, we uh, got the technology grant. We also, we already had in our fifth grade class, we already had a set, a class set of tablets, Kuno tablets. You can see the picture of them there. We were using them two students to one student. And um, I have a student here somewhere. Is my student here? Yeah, right there. And she has one of our tablets. Mackenzie, if you could just like give a real quick like one, two sentences of what, how it's changed our classroom. We get to be more in, in it about what we do. How? Go ahead. Well, you write something on the board and make them Right, so I just give them their list of things they have to do and they open up their tablets and they get busy and they do their work. But the problem was that we have 55 fifth graders, go ahead, you can sit down. We have 55 fifth graders and we only have 28 tablets. That was a problem. So we, we got the fifth grade, got the technology grant and now we will be the first group of students in the county to have actual one-to-one -one device. So every student will have a device in their hands and they can use them all day, they can take them home with them and use them at night, they don't require internet access. So a lot of our students have a problem with that. Uh, that's an exciting thing that's going on at Duval, our technology grants that we just got. Needs, yes, we have them. Uh, we need a full-time TIS or TSS here. We have a lot of technology and we have a lot of technology in boxes that we can't get put up. We need structural support. We need people to mount things, we need people to put things up, we need people to hook things up. Teachers just can't do it. We can't climb around in the ceiling. We can't put things on walls. Uh, we need it put up. That's what we need more than anything. And we need somebody to help us when we have a problem. And we have sometimes inconsistent internet service. All those programs that we have, teachers come in and they have fabulous lesson plans and they're gonna do all those great programs. None of it works. Cause every time the electricity goes off at night, we have no internet the next day. So we really need some backup with our internet service. And those are, those are our needs and our concerns. Ms. Clayton. Thank you, Joe. Um, I want to share something with you before I get down to test scores. Um, the folder that I gave you all has a lot of different uh, things in it from our daily schedule, from our Wednesday schedule, from our uh, developmental counseling schedule, from our specialist schedule, from our facility checklist that went with OEPA, from our master schedule, our highly qualified. Uh, teachers, uh, who's in the building, our elementary teacher schedule, and you can look at this on your own because I wanted you to see just some of the things that we have put in place at Duval. I was truly flattered by OEPA when they came in and they, they were going to the classrooms and, and they had just fabulous things to say about my teachers and they said, at, we have found things at Duval that we are going to take back to our own school. Well, you know, that, that means a lot to us. 
Uh, one of the things you'll see in there that I think you'll probably think is pretty interesting is the um, expectations for a substitute. You know, instruction and education does go on even when you have a substitute. And so finally, I laid that down exactly what I wanted. And so it has helped us, and I've had several substitutes tell us that it has helped me. So you can look at this so you can see just some of the things that we're doing. I've always known that I'm only as effective as the people around me. I'm, I'm, as well as the students, are truly blessed by the strong group of teachers at Duval. You probably wonder what makes me say this. First, I want to recognize two teachers and tell you a little bit about them. Miss Margie Aggins, stand up Miss Margie, and Miss Tina Aggins. Both these ladies teach third grade, and I'm going to make them stand up here for a little bit. <laughs> Last year on the West Test, their students scored significantly higher than the state average on every test. And you have these numbers in front of you. Just to define significant, let me share the score differential with you. In math, the state of West Virginia averaged a 575 mean score. Duval third graders scored 584, a 9 point, 9 point difference. In reading language arts, West Virginia averaged a 434. Duval third graders scored a 444. In science, West Virginia third graders scored a 530. Duval scored a 546. In social studies, West Virginia third graders averaged a 389. Duval scored a 403. Pretty impressive. These teachers told me at the beginning of the year last year that they had set a goal to score higher than any other county school. And I thought, hmm, we'll see where this takes them. Well, you just can't imagine their surprise when I said to them, not only did you score higher than all the county schools, you outscored the state. And I'm going to share with you some of the things they did to make this happen. One, they stayed late. A lot of times I'd be rolling out of here at 5 o'clock and they'd still be here working. They analyzed data and they took that data and developed plans to meet kids' deficiencies. They based their instruction on the CSOs. They incorporated technology. They used research research-based strategies. They had test talks with their students. They gave their students incentives for mastering CSOs. And they had high expectations for all students. I was in and out of their classroom, and I saw this on a daily basis. These teachers made their classrooms relevant, and they got great results. The central office allowed me to send them on an educational field trip. Uh, to celebrate their success. So they went to the play center for the day. And I just want to say that both the students and the teachers should be commended for their hard work. Now I think Ms. Aggins and Ms. Aggins, Atkins, have some of their students with them. So would you bring them up and let them about Bailey and Elena and Garrett. And I think they're going to talk to you a little bit. We were going to give them a chance to kind of tell maybe something that they remembered from third grade that they felt maybe helped them do well on their West Test. Who wants to start? Elena, you can go first. We will fight. Thank you. Every day, those test scores. Every day, we mention it. 
Of course, I, did. I had a good teacher right there. <laughs> so he used to get on the intercom starting in January, just 45 days or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they had a count day. <laughs> but, uh, the truth. <laughs> but it, it was just a perfect storm. And they worked really hard. They we did. gave them an incentive at early on. Um, we were given a grant from the Challenger Learning Center in Wheeling, West Virginia, um, for us to come and um, do some activities at their center in Wheeling. And the kids worked really hard so that we could get there. Um, they got to do some amazing activities with NASA-based uh, technology, and they learned to build and shoot off rockets and things like that. So they, they were really hard working working group of kids, but we really couldn't have done it without the parents involved too. The parents yeah, were we really involved and they were and they said with their kids. Group. We're real proud of y'all. Hopefully next year we'll hear of how the fourth graders did through not <laughs> of course we kind of expecting the third of the <laughs> you all as fourth graders are gonna do really well too. We're real proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thing to my fifth grade teachers and uh, I was like no pressure but <laughs> but you know we are truly blessed and when I talk about only being as effective as the people around me as you can see so far I'm blessed we have great teachers here. I agree with Ms. Clayton. Uh, having worked with many of these people uh, I know how hard they work uh, and uh, some that haven't been recognized tonight I know all that they do so but we've heard that at Midway, we hear it again here tonight. It's not teachers, you can't beat having great teachers. But parents are, you know, part of that equation and a big part of it. Uh, you know, teachers will try to do what they can, but it takes some cooperation from both groups. And we've heard that from both schools, and I think we certainly agree and appreciate that. And I'll add that we uh, have a parent advisory council here, and we have parent volunteers coming in the school, and we're encouraging people to join that group and, and help out uh, various different things from clerical stuff to reading to students. So we're hoping that that's going to take off, you know, and people are going to get really even more involved in their children's education. 